Welcome everyone again. My name is Oscar Ramirez. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Startup Commons. Uh, before starting, uh, let me share a, a small reflection with all of you as a previous step to introduce our guest speaker today. So when we think of ecosystem concept, uh, by definition, uh, it is not owned by anyone. It is not really considered being controlled by anyone. So therefore, uh, when we look at their freedom and responsibility, they work hand in hand. So if there is no one whose responsibility it is to own the ecosystem, then in reality, uh, there is no one responsible to make it work. We can say then that it must be a collective multi-stakeholder responsibility, but as we know, it doesn't work like that in practice and therefore there should be someone uh, that could take this responsibility to look after the overall ecosystem becoming permanent and surviving uh, the different political cycles. So the question is, who is that entity or how should it be a structure? But uh, the truth is that the search for the answer to that question should start by professionalizing the field around ecosystem building. Individuals and organizations who help others by connecting them together with services, knowledge or resources, and really serving various ecosystem functions equally and, and be a neutral and sustainable organization with proper resourcing, long-term and data-driven development perspective with a strong mandate from all ecosystem key actors to coordinate ecosystem functions and connections at different levels, coordinate the ecosystem information flow and keep an inventory of development objectives, their progress and outcomes. So this is a very important piece in the ecosystem development puzzle. It is very critical and we are strongly communicating in all our works. Uh, this movement has already started in the US in 2017, the Kaufman Foundation launched the eShip Summit with the aim of accelerating the emerging field of entrepreneurial ecosystem building that, that contributes uh, to economic development. And so far, uh, they have been able to create a growing community of more than 1,000 ecosystem builders and the national resource providers uh, who support them. And by the way, Startup Commons is one of these uh, national resource providers. Based on the uh, input of those ecosystem builders, the eShip Goals framework was initiated uh, to serve as a set of collective objectives for the field to prioritize, organize, and collaborate with target to improve the effectiveness of the ecosystem building field as a whole, and as a result, uh, strengthen the profession and accelerate its adoption in more ecosystems. So today, uh, sharing her own journey with the ship Goals Framework, I am delighted to present Cecilia Lessinger, founder of Mass Collaboration, working closely as external consultant with the Kaufman Foundation to develop, support, and promote uh, the ship Goals Framework. I have to say that I have never met uh, with Cecilia, and it was supposed to meet with her at ship Summit 2020, but this pandemic has only delayed our, our meeting. Cecilia, welcome to Startup Commons webinar series and thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Well, thank you so much for having me and thank you to everybody who's joining us. Uh, so I, I am sad that we won't be meeting in person, but the eShip Summit will go on. Um, we will be having a virtual summit September 15th and 16th. So as we have more information, we'll be happy to share that with you so the community at Startup Commons can join us. Um, and normally, I want to present my um, presentation in like presenter mode, but one of my slides is not cooperating. So you're going to go see the, the, um, the presenter view, so kind of behind the scenes and maybe see my notes. But um, do you have any questions before me, uh, for me before I get started? I think that the floor is okay. yours, so go ahead. All right, so let me go ahead and, um, and share. Here. See if I can make sure that this is happening. Um, so we'll share a screen. Oh. So yeah, we're sharing the music and, uh, and then it doesn't want me to share the screen. So we'll go ahead. 
and get this going. Bear with me one moment. Technical difficulties, please stand by. Okay, can everyone see the slide? Is that the only thing you see? Is that good? Yes? All right. So um, eShip goals, we talk about eShip goals all the time. And I'll, um, I'm, so what I'm gonna share with you is how we got here to where we're at. Um, so what the heck are they, if you've never heard of them? How were they, how did they come about? And what do we do with them? So as Oscar mentioned, um, my name is Cecilia Wessinger. I, I do a myriad of things, just like all ecosystem builders, we wear a lot of hats. And one of the hats that I wear is as an eco, is an eShip community activator in support of the entrepreneur ecosystem building community. Um, the practitioners, like all of you, who are working in your custom and bespoke ways to support ecosystem building and your entrepreneurs. That sounds like a lot. It's, um, it's actually simpler than it seems. <clears throat> but we'll share. Mass Collaboration is my personal consultancy. And I'm one of the co-founders of the Future Agro Challenge for all of those people who support agropreneurs. Um, there's a global entity, and we can talk about that anytime you want to. So the, what the Kauffman Foundation is known for, it's recognized the world over as a foundation who supports entrepreneurship. And in supporting entrepreneurship, because Mr. Kaufman was a founder, he started out with a couple of thousand dollars in his basement and started to build a business that exited for a billion dollars. <throat> he always prides himself on saying that he was an uncommon man who was able to do, he was a common man who was able to do uncommon things. So his legacy is to support entrepreneurship primarily in the United States, but the Kauffman Foundation also supports entrepreneurship globally through the Global Entrepreneurship Network. And in supporting entrepreneurs, we recognize that communities need ecosystems and, and, and so communities need economies and, and this whole field of vision where entrepreneurs and ecosystems have to work together. So this is what the world needs and how can we make that happen? In 2017, under the leadership of the then Vice President of Entrepreneurship, Victor Huang, whose book some of you may be familiar with called The Rainforest, the idea of ecosystem building and ecosystem building practitioners was kind of put to the forefront and said, you know, if we want to support entrepreneurs, if we can support ecosystem builders, those people like all of you working in your custom and bespoke ways to help support communities, then we can exponentially help entrepreneurs because each ecosystem builder will be able to support and help. The thing that I've discovered working alongside the, the Kauffman Foundation is that there is no answer room at the Kauffman Foundation. There is no, no place that you can go to find all the answers. The answers are with all of you and each one of us will bring a piece of the puzzle. So we know that there are people working in Dubai and Albuquerque, New Mexico that are working to help their economies. So what we're doing is Kaufman is a great convener in bringing people together in order to do this work. So the you all have parts of the answer. And, we, and the, the mindset was if we were to form a framework, something where um, where people can work on together to aim at, like the moonshot was a goal that everybody said we were going to go to the moon. And so all of the, the support and things could catalyze and focus on one thing, then we were able to do that. UN sustainable goals are just like that. They're a target to, to shoot for, and you're able to aim for something that's a little more defined. So the idea of creating a framework around something that's very similar to UN Sustainable Goals was great. In 2017, I was a bootstrapping entrepreneur. I had left, um, I had left corporate America and was working on a startup. And, um, and I received this, this email from the Kauffman Foundation. And I, at that time, I was a One Million Cups organizer. And One Million Cups is a startup convening that happens all across the United States. 
globally, the Global Entrepreneurship Network sets up Startup Huddle, and it's very similar frame. You have a couple of entrepreneurs that present, and through their presentations, we ask a lot of questions to help each entrepreneur kind of go further along on their path. So I got this email, and, it, and it's funny because they spelled my name wrong, right? But this is actually my email that I received inviting me to this eShip Summit. I had no idea what eShip meant. And they said, we want to support in creating a gathering of ecosystem builders. And I'm like, what the heck is an ecosystem builder? Like, I've never heard those words put together in that fashion. Because so, nobody used ecosystem builder together in that sentence, unless you were talking about um, nature, right? So, so the Kauffman Foundation is very, um, well, they're very resilient and they keep asking. So the first time I, I kind of blew it off because I thought it was spam. And, um, and then I finally agreed. So I raised my hand and I went to Kansas City. So arriving in Kansas City, I saw these signs and it was like, I don't quite know what this is because this doesn't look like a welcome sign to anything that I've ever been to. Usually conferences are very, like, proper and there's procedure and all of those things and there are 450 people that showed up because they answered the call and 450 early leaders in the ecosystem building from 48 states puerto rico the district of columbia and 10 countries came together and andy stoll one of the senior program managers just got up on the stage and said well you're here you're ecosystem builders and so I was still trying to figure all that out, but I knew that this conference was not going to be like most conferences I've been to. First of all, there was 47% women, 29% people of color. It didn't look like a lot of conferences that you see in the United States, particularly around entrepreneurship or gatherings. But what it did look like was a lot of the people in communities that I lived in. I grew up in New York. I live in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The, the audience uh, configuration looked like our communities, which was a really interesting thing. So they introduced us to the concept that they were going to put together a three-year process to discover, design, and deliver this thing called ecosystem building as a professional field. They made the analogy that 10 years ago, there wasn't such a job as project management, but now there's accreditation, certification, there's, there's job descriptions and all kinds of things that are around that. And the, the Coffin Foundation believed that if we got people together that do this work and ask them a bunch of questions and try to refine what that looked like, that there could actually be a professional field. So all of you, could get paid to ecosystem build and not just to do this as the other thing you do while you run incubators, accelerators, co-working spaces. So in the discover design and deliver process, we're about in the deliver phase and we're learning new things all the time. So we're trying to get there. And so along the way, they, they had all these small group huddles. It was a very interesting way to hold a conference. It wasn't a whole bunch of people up on stage telling you how to think and how to do things, but all of us just kind of rolling up our sleeves, answering questions, and coming up with things that we called missions. And we thought if we were going to deliver a field, if we were to create this field, which actually exists, but let's say we put some structure around it, what would you need to have? And these are actual canvases that took place and outcomes and all these ideas that came out of a bunch of people huddled together, trying to answer some questions and then going on to the next question. And out of all of this in 2017, there were over a thousand sticky notes and 350 responses to all of these things that are going on in the world, 55 ecosystem building communities and events all throughout the world. A bunch of mayors came together and we synthesized. So one of the other things that, that happened was all this information was synthesized and codified 
to create this framework that we call the eShip goals. And the reason that all of this is very important is because I want you to understand that these eShip goals did not come from some back room at the Kauffman Foundation. The Kauffman Foundation actually took all the input that they heard from all the people in the community and, and really just organized it so that we could look at it as a framework. And we talk about an inclusive field with a collaborative culture, a shared vision, connected networks, practical metrics and methods, and universal support, sustainable work, which I will explain individually. In the 2018 eShip Summit, there was some definitions that were kind of put around that. And, and when we put around the definitions, there were a whole bunch of, there, I was still simply a participant of this venture. And we went around and put little notes on where we thought this idea, maybe not the right way we wanted to define things. This idea looked right, but it may not be. And there were actually in the beginning about 13 or 14 goals. And it was synthesized down to seven. Out of these seven goals, there were 130 initiatives or ideas or projects that could come up that would make sense um, in order to do that. When we got all of this input from the community, there were people that were recognized as leaders in the field. They were nominated by the community themselves. And we call these eShip champions. There were 14 of us that got together, took all of the information so now it just doesn't happen just in the Kauffman Foundation, but throughout the community, all of these individual ecosystem builders and, um, and national resource providers coming together to take all of the information that was acquired and really fine tune. So when we were fine tuning all of this work, one of the questions that we sent out into the community was, as we convene together, what is it that you want us to think about? So we were entrusted by the community and sent along with this charge. When you're doing this, please keep this in mind. Again, more sticky notes. So had we known in advance that we would be using all these sticky notes, I probably would have invested in sticky notes. But we find that it was the best way to come up with this framework. So now here's the information that you've all been wondering about. All of this information can be found at Kaufman.org eship goals and you can delve a little bit deeper into what these things mean these seven eship goals were were identified by the field as a good place to to hone our focus in order to do this work of building this field out of that convening of these these eship champions came a little bit more of the framework and by that time i had become one of these eShip um, community activators, there are two of us. My colleague, Christine, who, who focuses on the national resource provider community, and myself, um, who is more focused on the ecosystem building practitioners, such as all of you in your custom and bespoke ways. When we talk about inclusive field, we talk about the diverse perspective. So we're talking about different ages, different races, different representation from urban to rural. Um, we talk about educators and, um, and different kinds of practitioners, whether you're a policymaker or you're a scrappy startup, startup, startup entrepreneur. So the idea is that the more perspectives you get, the richer your environment is. And a good way to move that forward is one of these 30 prioritized goals out of 130 initiatives. So these projects are currently in different levels of starting up. So we said, you know, if there was a speaker bureau where people would talk about ecosystem building like it's a thing, then, then we'll be able to talk to people a little more holistically and understand what that is. In order to have good community culture, when people come together, especially from diverse perspectives, you have to have some kind of collaborative culture. And 
what we do in our eShip community is we try to model what's needed to create what's possible. And in order to do that, um, in order to create a, a culture where there's, um, there's a, a, a feeling that you're supported by the community, that people advocate for each other instead of self-promotion, because there's a difference in ecosystem building and ecosystem building, right? So ecosystem building is all about you. Ego, ecosystem building is all about the community. And then we have, um, we have a shared vision. So the idea of a shared vision is that there's a North Star to shoot for. So whether you're in a peak or a valley, that we're aiming for the same thing. So right now there's a project team or a group of people that are coming together to really identify what a field mission and vision and value for, for this community would look like. And that's really hard because all of us do things in very different ways. So figuring out what a mission, vision, and values and outcomes are, you first have to put a stake in the sand and say, hey, I think this is it. And then a bunch of people come together and kind of flesh this out. Also, when you say ecosystem and I say ecosystem, are we talking about the same thing? When you say entrepreneur and I say entrepreneur, do those sound the same, but do we define them in very different terms? Are you a high tech, high growth? Are you main street business, social entrepreneur, all those things. So we found that we should have some kind of dictionary or terminology that we all share so that we, we, can, we can understand that we're talking about similar things. Then we come to connected networks and people always say that the problem is a silo. And I don't believe that the problem is actually the silo. A silo is where you laser focus and get stuff done. That's why we work in small groups. The problem though, is that all these, silo, all these siloed communities don't know what anyone else is doing. So when you don't know what else somebody else is doing and there's no relationship, then you tend to do the same things that other people are doing because you don't know, there's no visibility. So if we permeate the silos, if we connect the networks, and I can see what you're working on, then I know, should I pivot? Should I work in tandem? Should we find alignment? Should we come together and work on the same project or do something else, right? So connecting those networks and seeing what's going on is really vital. There can only be really one UN. There should only be one established standards body. So maybe the hope and the goal is that we come together, all of us with representation, to talk about what that looks like together, right? Then if you don't have quantified methods, which is now actually called practical metrics and methods, I need to change the slide, um, but practical metrics and methods is a way to measure where we are and figure out where we wanna go. Everybody wants data. Everybody wants to know what your KPIs are. So, but are we measuring the same thing? So when we come together, are we finding that what we're measuring is the same? When I say the health of an ecosystem, am I talking about the same things that you say are the health of an ecosystem? So it's having those measurements and otherwise you go around in circles, right? If you don't define where you are and where you're going, you're just circling around and everybody's talking to a different story. Universal support is basically about introducing those people who don't yet know that they're part of the ecosystem to understand that they are also a stakeholder in this community. So that universal support looks like um, a common policy playbook or, or activating foundations so they can support these ventures. And goal seven is about sustainable work. How do we actually get paid to do the things that we do? Is it certification and accreditation? Are there learnings? Things like this. Startup Commons is a perfect example of how we get to sustainable work because we're making the case for this as a movement and in order to do that, we definitely want to make sure that there are job descriptions that people can work towards. So 
we host seven eship calls a month there are seven goals and seven eship calls we also understood that infused in all of these goals is storytelling that's how you open hearts and minds and wallets that's how you recruit more people into the conversation and for a goal five like metrics you're talking about a case study um, for goal six, like universal support, you're talking about a public service announcement or global awareness. So all of these things are intertwined in all of these goals. So we host eight calls a month currently in order to sense make and move all these projects forward. My role is the community activator for the, for, on behalf of the ecosystem building community as a contractor with the Kauffman Foundation. My role is to make sure that there's a community dashboard so that people can come together and find out what's happened, what's happening, what happens next, and how to connect with the community. I monitor the Facebook group and the Slack channel, not to, not to define, but to make sure that, that basically there are some guardrails and, and um, communication is flowing and I'm able to see and help connect um, some of the things that are going on when people have questions about these things. I do community outreach and one of the other roles that I do is to help or design the eShip Summit, which will be coming up soon. Currently in our community, there are over 1200 subscribers to the greater eShip community email. All of these links I will share with Oscar who can share it with the community. Um, there's a Facebook page and a Slack channel. Um, currently to date, there have been 19 eShip champions. Again, those are the people that are recognized by the community and, um, and by the people doing the work as somebody who can help lead and facilitate and, and support as guides along this journey. And what we all do together is work from the top-down hierarchy that exists the grassroots movement that's coming up and all of you doing, and we meet in the messy middle. What we found is, unless you put up some scaffolding, it's all over the place. We go down rabbit holes, we don't work together. And so what our roles simply are, are the scaffolding, which help host all of the things that are happening. We didn't create the eShip goals. We don't move those fields forward just a, um, a couple of us on a small team working in conjunction with a small team that's part of the foundation. We're actually trying to support the community in working together. So basically, we're air traffic controllers, we're switchboard operators, and we're scaffolding holders. And the scaffolding needs to be kind of flexible because we don't know which direction it goes. It's a little bit squishy. And, um, and we try to support the best that we can. And you know what the thing is, we don't actually, um, we won't actually get it right all at once. We're only going to be able to help in a certain way. So everything wants to go to mass collaboration. That's the goal. And one of these days, I hope that Oscar and Balto will invite me back to, to kind of define this a little bit further. But the idea of how you get to mass collaboration is it starts with an invitation and then we build community, which is what Startup Commons is a great example of. The eShip Summit Goals community is an example of. It's where we can come together and start sense making. And when you feel like you belong in a place so much so that you can actually say your truth and not have to go along with what everyone says, right? We know that innovation comes from dissent and challenging the notions and disrupting what already exists. When we build that community, there's a bigger level of communication and visibility. So we trust each other. Everything moves at the speed of trust. If we don't have that community, we can't get to communicating. I don't know what you're doing. There's no transparency. The problem isn't transparency. There's a lot of information. And if I don't know what you need to know, and you don't know me well enough to ask me the question that I can answer to support you, then we don't get to that. Once we build up this communication and visibility, 
there's coordination and alignment. It's like traffic laws so that we don't crash, right? But all of that stems from the fact that we belong in a community together because we know plenty of people in communities that go faster than they're supposed to, go down the wrong way on a one-way street because they don't care enough about the community to follow the guidelines that were put in place for the sake of the community. And all of this progresses over time. And actually what we find is that we can only, I think the eShip Goals team, myself, Christine, Andy, and Lauren, and even with the eShip champions and the national resource providers, we can probably only get to a coordination and alignment. That collaboration comes from all of you. So I want to invite you, just like I was invited three years ago, oh, probably next week, you're invited because we need you. At the bottom of that email, what you didn't see is that message that says, your voice is essential to this conversation, and I hope you'll join us. And so what I know that in everything that we do, whatever it is, whether it's COVID or, or the race issues that we're going through currently in the United States, or whatever is happening in your community, whatever the problem is, the community is the answer. So I'm really honored to be part of this community. If you'd like to get in touch with me, um, the, my, my email's on the screen and, um, and I will make sure that we send you links for this. There's a, a virtual playbook and the dashboard and all of these things. So that's basically it. Um, now you can ask me anything. Thanks so much, Cecilia. Thanks a lot. It, it is really impressive the, the work that you, the whole community, and, and also the, the Kaufman Foundation is, is doing to support uh, this uh, amazing uh, movement. For me, the, 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 the most inspiring thing is, is about not thinking too much about details and just get started and, and take action towards basically mobilizing people and community uh, builders towards this uh, common and, and shared role. Um, and then as long as you are doing and you are progressing, uh, then you will find a way to basically to refine and iterate and improve. So that's the most important thing to, to have that long-term thinking and, and real commitment uh, because doing this amazing work is not going to happen overnight, right? Oh, absolutely. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen overnight. And, um, and as many of us know that, you know, sometimes, sometimes one of the things that, that we find is that you live, in, you live in a community, but the community doesn't actually know who you are, right? So you're the, you're the quiet person in the back of the room who's making the connections. And if you have a new venture, you know, as an entrepreneur, if, if I say, I have an idea there, and you ask 20 people in your community, hey, I have this great idea. I'd like to build a business. And people in your community will say to you, hey, so maybe you should go talk to this person, or maybe you should, you should do this or that. And what's happening is that there's usually, if you ask 20 people, maybe there's two or three names that keep coming up those are probably your ecosystem builders, right? So there's the, they're the, the invisible glue, they're what we call the mycelium. So that's the invisible stuff that makes stuff work. And so, so sometimes you don't get that recognition and it's really frustrating because as you're working really hard in your community, you don't get the, I, I know I didn't. Sometimes it's really hard to get people to return my phone calls or answer my emails. But I know that when somebody else comes in from outside my community and they shine a light, so it's the halo thing. So if I say, if I go to, to wherever you are, you're in Spain, right, Oscar? Um, yes. If I went into your community and I said, hey, you know, there's this guy, Oscar. He's doing some really cool stuff. You should really talk to him. Like, because you're getting validated by somebody else outside your community, 
it holds a lot more weight. So that's why we say we advocate for each other. So one of the things that we encourage when you're posting on our Facebook pages, please don't tell me about the book you've written or the course that you're going to have. Find a friend, have them tell us because it carries a lot more weight. The fact that somebody else cares enough about your thing to be able to elevate it up. Now, go do the same for somebody else. So when you support and advocate for each other, you're building that community. You're fostering that engagement. Then you don't become the ego system builder, right? Mm -hmm. So I think there's a question about funding this effort. Yeah, yes. you know what? <laughs> there's a whole bunch of people that do this for free. It's your side hustle, right? Um, there are starting to become roles that, that, are, um, that you're able to play. There's a town in, um, in Pennsylvania called York, Pennsylvania. They actually have um, a gentleman I know, Skylar Yost, who is the ecosystem builder for York, Pennsylvania. He is part of the government. And so it's really interesting to be able to see that a community has realized that they need somebody within their policymaking system to do this. Besides the Kauffman Foundation, and Kauffman Foundation is only one of the players, right? The Case Foundation has done some wonderful things around entrepreneurship, and they've brought together and shine light on underrepresented demographics of entrepreneurs. So there's all of this stuff that's around. Um, and the invitation is, if you wanna get involved, great. If you know of a, a funding body, great. We're trying to figure out how to, how to, um, how to connect with community foundations. So little foundations here and there that are, that are trying to catalyze their community and showing them that this ecosystem building thing is a great way to support your community, right? So, um, so yeah, we do it for free. Unfortunately, I, and I did, I did it for free. And at the end of the 2018 summit, when they announced that they were going to bring on a, and somebody in the community to help support the community, I raised my hand and there was a process. We had to send videos in and post them on Facebook and the community weighed in and, um, and we were interviewed. And the funny thing about that process is when we were interviewed, we weren't asked questions like in a traditional job. Um, they ask questions like, so tell us about how you've brought together community. Tell us about how you catalyze something to happen. Not about the degree or the pedigree or what jobs have I done before, but more, it was an RFP. It wasn't really a job ad, right? So it's a very different thing that you look for in trying to find a person who helps support. So I put down stuff like, I've organized tailgates at Springsteen concerts where people came from three different continents, right? I bring people together. I organized my high school reunion from 1,200 miles away. That's the stuff that I want to do. So I want people to be in community. And, um, and so they thought that was a pretty good deal and that's what they've gotten so far. So, um, so yes, more questions. So, for example, uh, Cecilia, uh, they are asking about, do you think uh, hierarchical frameworks will morph over time into more nodal frameworks for peer mass collaboration? Um, so, or... frameworks for mass collaboration. You know, yeah, the, um, I think that, that, I don't know. I don't know that hierarchy is ever going to change. It's a system that we've developed over centuries, right? And we put somebody at the top of something and those people have more pie, right? So we, we work and we teach our entrepreneurs to think about abundance mindset over scarcity mindset, but we then we don't think about that in our communities, which is really interesting. So the abundance mind, the scarcity mindset is, there's only this much pie. And if we divide up the pie, people can only have different size portions of it. And, and the hierarchy model is where 
everybody who has pi is over here. And then there's a bunch of people without any pi that are over here. Abundance mindset tells us, you know what? We can bake more pies. And so some of us have to go find resources in order to put these together. Some of us need to build the kitchens or, or get the, people, the ingredients and all of that. And then we bake more pies. And then you know what? Something different happens. And then we bake some cookies and then we have cake and then we have a whole big party. So, so I think that, that the challenge is that you can't always dismantle hierarchy. You can't dismantle, but we know the systems don't work because the systems were built to support the people that the systems were built for. So now we're creating new systems and we're connecting existing systems with a new model. So we're looking at things differently. And I think that that's where a framework shifts and that's where, where it needs to be flexible. So, um, so I think that it's exhausting trying to dismantle hierarchy. I just have to show other kids that some of the cool kids are over here too, so. Great, so we, we are getting more questions. So for example, can you list some of the tools that you use to facilitate this? So some of the tools, you know what? We're making it up as we go along with that slide. That so that triangle started out looking very much like Maslow, right? So the Maslow hierarchy where all your basic physiological needs are met and then we're able to do this and we're able to do this and then you self-actualize. Um, after the last ESHIP summit in 2018, as we were trying to sense make and, and really understand all this stuff that was going on, basically it's a bunch of us kind of in a room and and building up on this thing and that whole coordination thing and, and there were arrows all over the place and all of that. Um, as we built this triangle to build that community, we showed it to a friend of ours, Faye Horwitt, uh, my dear friend who's the president of Forward Cities. And she looked at the thing and she said, you know what, that's wrong. I said, what do you mean that's wrong? We've spent hours looking at this thing. Like this makes sense. She says, of course it makes sense. The thing is, your triangle is upside down. You know, just like Maslow, it should be like this. Because your basic physiological needs are the very beginning, the foundation, and you build an increase from there. So this whole thing erupts this way. And so when you get to mass collaboration, it's actually greater than what it was to begin with. So your triangle's upside down. And so now we're really sitting at this saying, wow, this is really cool. About that time, Victor Huang walks by the room. And so we're really excited and we're showing him, hey, um, so this is a thing, like we spent all day talking about this, right? And he looks at it and then we said, well, it's kind of like Maslow. And he said, you know, I always thought of Maslow as, a as, a, as an hourglass. And I thought, what do you mean Maslow is an hourglass? And he said, yes, because you self-actualize and then you bring it into community. And I looked at him and I'm like, Victor, you just need to go away. Like, this is so next level. I don't even have brain space for this. But, but is there tools? I wish there were. And, and what I would love to do is to share the ones that we currently have and have you help build on to what, what else we can do. More questions. So does COVID-19 makes it more difficult to connect ecosystems? Does what? The... Does COVID-19 makes more difficult yeah. to connect it's, ecosystems? It's funny because you would think that's the case, but COVID has done a couple of things. Um, it's really crappy to say we're finding opportunity in crisis, but crisis creates opportunity. So now we're taking time to have these conversations a little more intentionally. We're taking the pause to actually reflect on how we got here. So a lot of how we got here, this, we're building so fast. So before COVID, we're just kind of building and making it up as we go along and we're moving as fast as we can. And we're thinking about how, how the more you build, and the quicker you build, the more productive you are. But that's not really a reality, right? That's only 
are one way of looking at things. Sometimes you, slow, you slowly build so that you can build fast. If you don't sense make first, you can't go faster because otherwise along the way, things will break down. And Valto has a great analogy about building instead of a one-time thing, you're actually building an engine. So the thing is the engine needs to keep running. And when you're in a time not like COVID, right? Where people are just building engines left and right, we don't know, did we use the wrong part? Did we, did we get this wrong? Oh, is it more aerodynamic if we use it this way? Like we didn't really think about these things and it made us slow down and really assess what is the priority? Because building more engines isn't as important as building an engine that works. And if it should work in whatever context. So, so I want to invite all of you to take this as an opportunity to really assess where it is that you actually want to go instead of trying to get there so fast. Great. Uh, more questions. Uh, this is maybe related to one of the ship goals. So what kind of specific metrics do you use to measure the community? Oh, there's so many wonderful people that measure communities in <laughs> wonderful ways. Startup <laughs> Genome will tell you how things are built in Frankfurt. And um, I think they, they named it at one time, like one of the best ecosystems from the measurements that they do. Our friend Tom Chapman in Omaha measures the health of ecosystem builders. Um, they do a, 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 an ecosystem building health challenge through startup champions. Forward Cities measures the health of an ecosystem through the equity lens and how inclusive it is. So, and, um, and over at EcoMaps, there's a, a whole other way that they look at it. One of the things that um, through a goal five of uh, practical metrics and methods conversation is trying to get some of these things defined. So there's a group of people, and if you'd like to get involved in that, um, Chad Renando, who's um, an eShip champion, he's the gen manager in Australia. He's kind of leading an effort and, and basically um, it's identifying, just like entrepreneurs do, we identify that there's a problem. The problem is, people measure ecosystem build, ecosystems very differently. Let's see if we can hone it in and find some definitions and some, some ideals that we can agree on. We're not gonna agree on everything and things are gonna be different measuring ecosystems in Africa as they are in South America, but we're gonna start somewhere. So when we can put those things together in a framework and then share it with the world and have the world share yeah, I think that's right. Or um, maybe we need to fine tune this. But at some point also, we have to put our, our stake in the ground and say, okay, this is it. Like the term ecosystem building. I was on a call right before this and we talked about ecosystem building and there's ecosystem developer and there's, is it different from community person and all of that. I think the way that I view ecosystem builder is that you're actually taking what already exists because it's not building from scratch. It's not we're making things up from a clean slate. There's a whole bunch of stuff out there. And what I do as an ecosystem builder is I catalyze all those tools that are out there in the environment to kind of put something together that it's never maybe existed or existed as well in this way, right? So. I do these things as an ecosystem builder to enforce and reinforce all the things that work. Wonderful. Okay. Yes, yes. It's, it's quite hard to, to, to agree on, on one specific uh, KPI so much because ultimately the, the, uh, I would say that metrics are quite close to or are very attached to how you define yourself success of your community. And there mm -hmm. are many variations and definitions for that depending also on the maturity level where you are yeah. so but i agree that there, there should be also i would say common agreement on a specific i would say high level measurements that can help you to drive and to move forward to different mm -hmm. uh, maturity levels so more questions so we still have a few minutes 
so what are some of the most common pitfalls early stage ecosystem builders run into within community? What are the early pitfalls? Um, I think that, that some of the pitfalls that people, you know, there's, there's the idea that the ecosystem builder knows everything and that's not necessarily true, right? We know more or we come to it with the heart and the mindset that we want to learn more and we want to do better. And so I think that, that a pitfall is when you think you got it. I work in, um, in cultural competency, inclusion, diversity, which is um, a, a field like no other, right? It's like booming and needed and all of those things. And I always, um, I never like the term woke because woke is a, is a term that's used by people in diversity, equity, inclusion circles to, to understand the concept of oh, I get it, I understand the race equity issues, the ageism, the, 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 um, the underprivileged demographics and all of that. So I get it, I understand. Just like if I put a label of ecosystem builder on myself, that means that I understand. I wanna think about that as a, as a process, right? So just like being in inclusion diversity circles, I'm awakening, I'm learning all the time. I'm a, a woman, immigrant, person of color living in these United States. I don't know what it's like to be you, another woman, person of color, and immigrant living in these United States. I only know my lived journey, but I come to it with the intention that I'm going to keep awakening to the fact that people have individual stories. Just like an ecosystem building, if I say I'm an ecosystem builder, I don't have all the answers, but I come to it with the approach that I want to learn more. I want to make my community better and more robust. I want to create more connections so that people can do the things that they do because that's what ecosystem building is. It's an active verb. It's not a label. So, so are, there, are there ways that we could do it? Better? Yeah, absolutely. But, um, but I haven't figured it all out yet. So I'm, I'm very happy to learn from all of you. Yes. Um, so how do you collaborate with ecosystem builders outside the US? So what type of maybe, uh, what would you like to capture from other ecosystem builders? So, so the, the calls that we host on a monthly basis, um, and, and as I mentioned, I'm going to share the link with the dashboard here. I'll actually do that. Um, the link with the dashboard, there's a Slack channel. Um, there's all of these, I will put them in the chat. Um, so you can all come and join. So the invitation is for all of you. So the community dashboard is, um, is a way that you can watch some of the past, um, videos of the calls that we've had in the past. Um, some of it, it's a lot of information. I'm gonna tell you to follow your energy. If you want it, if you have a question about something, great. If you wanna know what's going on and you wanna hone in on one goal or whatever, those communities are open and we have people that join us from all over the world. Um, absolutely, it's an open invitation. Eship isn't just about the United States, right? Um, the Facebook page, is an open community. Um, I will ask that if you go on the Facebook page, there are questions that you are asked um, to answer in order to come onto the platform. The reason that we do that is not to say you're an ecosystem builder and you're not, but to make sure that we keep bots and, and all kinds of things outside of the community so that you intentionally want to be there. If you invite other people to that Facebook page, please let them know that we're going to be asking them to answer questions. So, so if you just invite people, they'll never know. And we don't want to look like spam. Um, I know I want to be mindful of time. The Slack channel, you can join um, the goal calls, just sign up for. And, um, and yeah, so that's how you can get involved. And it's open to anyone who wants to attend. Come with a sharing mindset. 
Yeah, but are you specifically looking for something concrete from, from other countries to, to, for collaboration to duplicate or? Um, I can't say that we are. I think that we all want in some way, shape or form for the thing that we do for free to yeah. become a thing that's recognized and, and to be able to either make a living at it do it better, skill up, get more connected, whatever this ecosystem building thing, the idea is that, that we're better together, right? Like I said, I couldn't find the answer room at the Kauffman Foundation. I don't have all the answers. I think all of you have parts of the answer. So inviting all of you to take part in this is maybe ecosystem building is a very systems level thinking, right? We look wide as ecosystem builders. But some of us are looking down and working on the thing that we need to work on, our community, our organization. Hopefully these eShip goals are just a framework where you can think about the things that you do, even in an organization. Are you being more inclusive? Are you creating a collaborative culture? Do we have a common goal and shared vision, right? Are we connecting with each other in ways that, that catalyze every one of the parts? Are we measuring where we are and what we're doing? Are we inviting other people to be part of this? And are we actually making sure that we're robust in what we do? So you can use the eShip framework to address your individual organization or project, just like you can to look at the world. It's fractal. So you look up, you look down. Yes. Okay, we are getting to the end. So I have a final question for you, uh, okay. Cecilia. So uh, that is from, from my side. So uh, what have it's been the, the, your, your, I would say your main learning along the way in this journey with the ESHIP goals? I have learned more in the past couple of years than I've learned since I was in school. Um, <laughs> It's, um, I've learned that no matter what, as I said, no matter what the problem, community is the answer. And I've learned that there's a lot more to learn. And I am, I have the honor and the privilege of working alongside some of the most amazing people that are trying to do the most epic stuff and trying not to curse. Um, but to be invited on this call is, is a great honor to share the work that have come together from several hundred people. You know, this is the eShip framework is the work of the community. And so I, I get to share that. And sometimes I sound kind of smart because I repeat some of the things that other people have said before me. So I've learned that all of you people are, are epic and wonderful. And if we open up opportunities, and work with each other, we go beyond the moon. Okay? Yes, excellent. Great, Cecilia, thanks so much for, for your time again. It has been like a, a real pleasure being with us today. Uh, at Thank least you. from my side, I, I have learned a lot. Of course, I'm, I'm learning a lot along the way in, in this collaboration that we have. We have a playbook. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> there's, a, there's a, a live version, there's a new version coming up, but you can find it online. Um, can I ask you that um, if you can capture the questions that are in the, the chat and the, the Q&A, that I can, I can actually try and answer some of that? That would be great. Yes, yes. So, so we, will, we will distribute, of course, the, the webinar recording for all attendees. And, and also we will capture the, the pending questions so you can also uh, can answer one-to-one. Uh, -one. And that's it. So from my side. So thanks again for for taking your time with us. Uh, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, we are preparing another webinar for next week. Uh, it will be the fourth in a row. So so yeah. So we are pushing hard. And see you soon. Stay safe and stay healthy. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. <laughs>